Hi everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineer Training Program. And today's topic is about Lambda functions. So what Lambda functions is all about and in which scenario we should use Lambda functions? Everything we will be exploring in a practical way. So let's start the class with the agenda. So the agenda for today's class is overview of Lambda function. Create your first Lambda function. Configuration of Lambda function. Create a test event. Test your Lambda function. Schedule a Lambda function with event bridge rules. And add event based trigger to a Lambda function. So first of all, Lambda function is like a serverless compute service. If I compare with EC2 instance, even EC2 instance will help you to, or you can say, process your data or to execute something. If I, on the other side, if I talk about S3, that is only storage service. That means you can store your input data or output data over there. But still, in order to process your data, you would need a compute power. So either you can launch a EC2 instance or you can go with Lambda, which is serverless compute service. Now the difference is when you launch EC2 instance that will keep on running. You have to keep it running and you have to manually stop it in case you fall and it will unnecessarily add the cost. On the other side, Lambda is a serverless. That means as a user, you don't have to worry about starting it or stopping it or terminating it. It will start automatically when you run your code and it will stop automatically once your code execution is done. So it runs your code in response to events. You can do multiple ways. First thing is manual execution. Suppose you have written your execute that so you can manually do that. Second thing is you can schedule it. If you if you say that I want to run this every day 6 a.m. in the morning, that can be done. And you don't have to execute manually. This will be automatically running at a defined schedule. Or it can be triggered based upon an event. For example, you have a S3 bucket and you are saying that any time if any file is coming into my bucket, my lambda should trigger. That means it is event based. Suppose there is a CSV file and there is another team, they are copying the CSV file into your bucket, but there is no defined schedule. Sometimes they copy that CSV file five times a day. Sometimes they don't even copy a single file in the entire week. So basically you are not aware about their schedule. In that case, you are saying that as in when they are copying the file into my bucket, my Lambda function should trigger. So Whatever different scenario I'm talking about, we will be doing all these things practically. So you can choose from a variety of programming language. When you are writing your Lambda code, you can choose whether you want to use Java or you want to use Scala or Python or Node.js and many more programming languages. It scales automatically in response to incoming request. Suppose you your Lambda is running and behind the scene, it will start a small server. That is not your concern. AWS will start a small server in order to execute your code. In the meantime, before the execution finish, suppose a new request is coming for the same Lambda. So as and when the request keep on coming, it will horizontally scale. Suppose 500 requests came at the same time. That means the small server will not work. Behind this Scene, AWS will increase the compute capacity and that is again not your concern. Whether your one lambda is running or thousands of lambda running behind the scene, what is the compute power required that AWS will take care. And you can schedule lambda function with event breeze rules. I will explain what is event breeze rule and how to schedule your lambda. And it can be used for processing time up to 15 minutes. That's a limitation of Lambda. 
although we are comparing with ec2 instance we are saying that ec2 instance will keep on running and on the other side lambda will help you to start and stop automatically that is true but at the same time <coughs> in case your processing needs more than 15 minutes lambda is not a good choice suppose you have large amount of data available in s3 and you want to analyze that you want to do some processing on top of that and you know that the processing time will go beyond 15 minutes <coughs> in that case the lambda is not a good choice in that case you should go with ec2 instance or any other type of uh, compute service but not lambda okay so now let me switch back to my browser and we'll be creating our first lambda function so that you can get some live idea so i will go to my aws console and from here i will search for lambda you can see the tagline run code without thinking about servers that means you concentrate as a developer you concentrate on writing your code where it will run what type of server capacity is required when to increase the server capacity when to stop the server that is not your concern you can concentrate on your code okay so i will click on lambda so as of now there is no lambda function available if you want to read more about it you can see this dotnet go java node.js python ruby and all this type of programming language is available on the left side there is a this three lines right just click on that it will display a lot of options you can click on functions and you will find that there is no functions as of now yes you can see that there is no data to display because there is no function available we can create that click on create function so when you are creating a function it will give you multiple options the first one first option is author from scratch that means you have to write your own code from beginning second is use a blueprint when you click on use a blueprint you will find few options you can click here and you can see this one it depends on your requirement suppose you want to read something from s3 so you can see this get s3 object hello world function make https request and many more options you can see here okay these are your blueprint you, that means some sample code is available you can use that and you can enhance it as per your need or the third option is container image that means you already have a docker image that has some code available and you will directly use that container for your lambda function but out of these three the most common option is the first one author from scratch and we'll go with that function name it's completely up to you my first lambda function or in real time scenario you can give some meaningful name what exactly your lambda does you can give the name accordingly after the run time that means which programming language you will be using so the most of other languages as well Do .NET, Go, Java, Node.js, Ruby, and many more you will find here. Okay, but I will go with Python. After that, this you don't need to change. That is fine. Uh, and now click on Create Function. Okay. So what I provided is I just provided a meaningful name of my lambda and the uh, programming language. I am going with Python. So now we have to write our own code, but we can start with very basic, like display some hello world message.
uh, let's wait for a few seconds it's creating the function for us in the meantime in case you are having any doubt anyone is having any type of doubt you can ask me okay seems like there is no doubt so our lambda function is also ready so you can see here there are few details listed here this is my lambda function name and last modify 21 seconds ago function arn if you remember i explained you in previous class that every resource in aws has a unique a complete name which is known as arn aws resource name so the arn for lambda function is arn colon aws colon lambda colon your uh, region us east one then your aws account number function and finally your arn which is unique okay coming down there are many uh, sections here the first section is code which should display the code here i think some some delay from aws side because it should not take this much time so we'll talk about the code that's the most important part apart from code there is a test option that means if your code has been written how do you test your code that we will be talking about in the test section and okay now the code is available right so some lines of code are already written to make it simple i will remove all this thing i will just keep only one line this one only def def means defining lambda handler that's a function name and there are two inputs in uh, event and context so you don't have to uh, like go into much detail about this line this line will be for every lambda function whatever lambda function you will write this line is mandatory and now under this line under this function you can write anything so i will start with a print statement okay print and i would say hello my first lambda function is okay so these two lines were already written the first these two right i just added this fourth line which is nothing but a just a print statement so you can click on deploy deployments saving your changes because whatever changes you made are not saved so click on deploy okay so you can see on the top successfully updated the function my first lambda function the code for that function has been updated now it's time to run the code so that we can see that this code is producing the expected output or not so you will click on test and once you will click on test first time it will ask you to create a test event the test event is nothing but sometime your lambda functions may need some input right so in that case for testing purpose you will you will provide a sample input so that you can test your code so this is one time activity and you have to create one test event you can give i would say test event 1 you can sub give give some name and then private and shareable when you click a private test event that will be available only for the current user <clears throat> suppose there are many developers